Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here at the Flannery Operator Skills Hub for the launch of the year, which is the Leica X-Watch 3D Collision Avoidance Launch. Chris, this is the first time in the UK this has been used on the site here at the Operator Skills Hub, demonstrating it to all your key customers. What's the feedback been like and why is this sort of tech so important that Flannery leads with? It's been a great day. It's been very, very early days in terms of getting it out onto site, but having already experienced it with Kia, um, working for the last two or three months, it's been great to share the experience of that with other potential customers. In terms of the day itself, we've had a fantastic uptake. Lots of really, really interesting questions from people. Um, and I think the key for me is that this isn't innovative. This is two established technologies that have come together, yep. um, working collaboratively yep. um, to, to share IP to actually solve a problem which is going to make a real difference on site. We talk about a lot in the industry, we have for years about cab clutter, but with Leica coming together, Leica Geosystems and Xwatch, it's all in one MC1 tablet that you've already got on your fleet. So that makes it so much more accessible, but also easy when you've got so many pieces of equipment out there to roll out across your fleet. That's just critical, isn't it? Absolutely, and it helps that familiarity as well. So the operators aren't having to experience a whole new system or a whole new setup um, to incorporate knowledge that they've already got without adding any more screens or clutter, as you say, Peter, makes it a lot easier. So tell us really, what is the impact? You know, you've been using it with the tier one contract uh, uh, in secret as such <laughs> um, for a few months time. What has been the real impact and, and what's kind of shocked you as, uh, from that impact perspective? So I'm very biased. I, my, focus <laughs> is, my focus is very much on the operator. Yeah, yeah. So the operator's got a really challenging job to do in front of them. What we're trying to do is, is not de-risk or de-skill the operator in any way, but we're taking the onus away from the operator uh, to give them that extra layer of safety to say that they're not going to hit that object that's yeah. been mapped. Yeah. So, my experience, what the feedback that I've had from the operators is that it gives them that reassurance that they've got that extra sort of um, safeguard in their corner, so to speak. And also it enables them to see things that they wouldn't have otherwise seen. And so they, again, it's that confidence to continue work, um, which I think is really important. It's not passive health and safety. So what it is, is it literally is a friend sitting next to you in the cab saying, we're not going to let you go over there don't worry about it look out the window do your job absolutely i mean just to give you the operator's perspective to look at a screen and to see all of the um to the red zone areas or areas that they don't need to cross there's it removes that ambiguity imagine if you're sat in a briefing and you've been given a complex set of instructions from a work foreman and they've said well this is the services over there and we think there's electricity over there oh and by the way don't forget that gantry and don't get too close to that varia guard that's an awful lot of information to take on and none of it had anything to do with the task that the operator was going to do in the first place yeah. so what this is effectively doing is it's collecting all of that information and displaying it on screen so the operator can see and dare i say it, if any of that got missed the machine physically couldn't encroach on those areas in the first place. So it's that extra layer of safety, as I said before. And I think what's interesting about this space, and this is really exciting, is you know, you're taking this technology, but you're also now looking at how you can use this technology and how you can roll it out from Flannery's perspective. And now we're talking about, Chris, the digital plant manager on site, and we're talking about how you, as an organization, can enable all of this to happen. This is a new sort of thinking from you, isn't it? This digital plant manager. Tell me about it. Yeah, no, that's a good point, Peter. We're, we're really passionate about this. We believe that the job sites are evolving. Digitization and words like that are getting banded around quite a lot. What it actually means is we're producing a huge amount more data on sites. Yeah. So how do we use that data? How do we translate that data into something tangible that somebody can do something with it? Now. One of the objections that we've got on site is that people are really busy. People have got yeah. things to do. People have got existing roles. Um, to try and shoehorn that digitization uh, piece into someone's existing role is hard, and people don't necessarily have the training or the skill set to interpret it straight away. So this is where we introduce the digital plant manager or a role of a similar ilk, yep. where that person can come in and start to understand that information and unlock those insights where they can really do something powerful with it. Um, our example today works from the perspective of here's a virtual wall, please don't go in it. Yeah, yeah. What we need to do is set up a process whereby somebody can come along and actually build those virtual walls and it be part of their day job, not something that's an afterthought. You know, this is a proactive thought where somebody comes in, sets their site up and then moves on or, or indeed comes back. And if a new cabin has been dropped on site, which is a point that's been raised by, yeah. by people today, you know, that, that can get mapped in from the outset proactively. 
we're seeing all of this in the industry right now is taking the digital rehearsal to the next step. So what you're talking about is enabling Flannery as a business to help people with the way they structure a site. So it's saying, listen, guys, we can geofence that. It's okay now for you to put that in, in that position, even though we're digging here and we're doing that because we're protected. That enables people to be more active in the way they, they work a site. So they're not moving that building all the time. They're not doing other things. And behind us, folks, you might only see a corner of, um, you've actually got the ability to go and train in a mobile sense, because you've got your uh, operator training center here, but you've got the mobile one behind us. And that makes a difference, doesn't it, when you get on site and you're training people on all this stuff in the actual area which they're working. Absolutely. Well, I'd like to make two points. The first part there that you spoke about in terms of, let's call it a digital twin, which yeah, is yeah. a phrase that gets banded around quite a lot. Again, the system that we've explored here with Leica and Xwatch is great that you can set up those virtual walls in advance with the profile of the actual machine. Yep. So you can see whether or not can you fit down that hall road or can you perform that action in the first place. Bringing that onto the training unit that you just mentioned, we can load all of that into the simulator yeah, and cool. practice it first. Yes, of course. And I, I didn't even think about you loading that into the simulator because fundamentally, you know, it is something new that people have got. And then it's like, it works like this, you know, and the simulator is simulating how the stop happens and you, you're doing this and it's not going anywhere. So the, the fundamentals of this are all taking us in that direction. But I'm really pleased, Chris, to hear about this digital plant manager because that's what worries me. We bring in all this technology and all this stuff and there's not a friendly face on site or somebody to call or dial into um, that I can actually understand what an operator feels like with all of this around them, but also how to interact between the client, the, the digital plant manager and the operator and have that kind of seamless link. It's so important, the people bit, isn't it? It's critical that that digital plant manager and the team that might sit within that person's environment are embedded within yeah. the construction process. They can't be isolated. So it's a bit like the engineers that people embed on site to keep things moving. We've got to embed that kind of person on site that keeps the whole digital world moving. Great to see this, another first for Flannery. Great to see you, Chris. Good to see Cheers. you again. Cheers.